For those that are missing, our like Sister Gail and Pastor Walker and her family, keep them lifted up as they're traveling back. In the name of Jesus, we just thank him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. How is everybody doing today? Great. Wonderful. Okay, y'all know, you know, if you pray with me, you know we won't be here long. We need to kind of, we need to kind of extend out a little bit. So we won't get out too, too early in the name of Jesus. Oh, take my time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we come thanking you, Lord God, for this opportunity to stand in your presence. Father God, we just ask that you have your way. And we just thank you for the service today. We thank you, Lord God, for showing up and showing out. Father God, we just ask that you continue to show up, Lord God, like you're doing. Father God, we just give you all the glory, all the praise, for you're so worthy to be praised. Father God, would give us ears to hear and a heart to receive your word. Lord God, let us be doers of your word, not just hearers only. Father God, bless the bishop and the first lady as they're traveling, Lord God. Bring them back home safely and on time. And we give you all the praise. And we thank you for Jesus right now. Hallelujah. He died on the cross for our sins. That the blood of Jesus right now is flowing through this house. The cleansing our hearts and our minds. That we can get a fresh anointing from you today. In Jesus' name do we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. Let's give another hand clap of praise. I don't know about you, but we've been going through different seasons in this life. So as we go through these different seasons, we have to know who we can depend on and who we can lean on. And the one I lean on is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I lean on my God because I know he's able to do anything but fail. So I'm going to encourage the body to just lean on Jesus. And my topic for today is my hope is in Jesus. So let your hope be in Jesus because if your hope is in Jesus, you will never fail. And people say, well, hope. I thought hope was for the world. No, there's a hope in Jesus, too. There's a spiritual hope. When it said, my hope is in Jesus, hope is not just a desire for something good in the future, but rather biblical hope is a confident expectation and desire for something good in the future. We don't just hope. We hope for God to do whatever he's going to do in our lives. We expect God to show up and show out. We expect God to do that, this, and above whatever we're asking him for. So keep your hope. And then if you don't want to use this word hope, use faith. Because faith, now faith is what? The substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Keep your faith and your hope in God. And then we're not going to stop there. We're going to go to confidence. Have your confidence. Because when you have faith, when you have hope, it builds your confidence. So let your confidence be built in Jesus Christ. Confidence is, a, is as trust, reliance, and assurance. Old Testament scripture in the Proverbs 3.26 says that the Lord shall be thy confidence. And that's what we want. We want God to build us up. Faith in God, certainty, and assurance of one's relationship with God. A sense of boldness. When we have boldness in God, even though the devil come up on us, hallelujah, stares right in the face. But we still have confidence that God is going to bring us out. We have hope that he's going to deliver us. We have faith that it's nothing too hard for God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. A service of boldness that is dependent on and realization of one's acceptance by God and a conviction that one's destiny is secure in God. I want to be secure in God. What about y'all? I don't want to live this life and then lead this life and then don't have a home prepared up there in heaven. We don't want to live this life and go to hell to with the devil. I don't want that life. I want to have a confidence. I want to have a boldness that God's going to do for me down here. And when this life is over, he's going to take me home to be with him. What y'all say? Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whoo. Whoo, Lord. Thank you, God. Psalms 21, 121 says, help from the Lord. Hallelujah. We all need help, right? Amen. We can't do it on our own. We're going through seasons where we know friends are few, sometimes family stray away, but my hope is in the Lord. Psalms 21 says, I will lift up my eyes into the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He's going to keep you, y'all. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. See, God don't go to sleep on you. You might call me at 12 o'clock at night and I answer the phone, but I might fall asleep on you. But see, God ain't like that. He's not going to fall asleep. So keep your hope in Jesus because Jesus is the only one that's going to bring you through these trying times that we go through. I don't know about y'all. Do y'all go through trying times? Maybe I'm the only one. <laughs> 
So he will keep you, hallelujah. He will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Now they, they mention Israel, but hallelujah, he that keepeth Abernet, he that keepeth Bethlehem, wherever you are located at, he that keepeth Tuscaloosa, in Birmingham, wherever you are, God is there. God is there before you get there. He's everywhere. So we can always depend on him. He said, the Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade up on the right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He's keeping us secure, even though we're in hot weather sometimes when our bills are due and we don't see the money coming. That's hot weather right there for me. What's, what, what about y'all? <laughs> when I'm saying, Lord God, what am I going to do now? That's hot weather. But he tells me that the sun should not smite thee. It's not going to overtake me by day. You know, it's not going to overtake me, nor the moon by night. Hallelujah, I might be in distress at nighttime because I'm there and I'm still praying and wondering, Lord, what's going to happen? What are we going to do next? He's still there. Wherever you are, because you have God in your life, he's everywhere you are. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. The enemy comes up against you. Don't worry about it because God is there. If your heart is on God, hallelujah, God is there. He's going to protect you. And you know what? He protects us from danger, seen and unseen. Sometimes we go through danger. We don't even realize it until maybe later on in the season. Um, I, sh I was there at 10 o'clock and 12 o'clock, somebody came in shooting. But guess what? God was there. He was our protector. He got us out the way before things would happen. So just remember, God is there. My hope is in Jesus. What about y'all? Hallelujah. He shall preserve thy soul. He's not going to let anything overtake us that we can't handle. Sometimes we get in the flesh. Sometimes we get upset. Sometimes we get mad. But then there's something on the inside of us that stirs up. I don't know about y'all. Do y'all ever feel that bubbling feeling on the inside? It stirs on the inside of you. And then you'll say, hmm, why was I worried? Okay, Lord. It gives you a calm spirit. You're not all upset and, and want to go fight and want to curse nobody out because God has come upon you. His peace is upon you. So that's what we want to walk in, and we want to walk in his peace because he preserves us. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. So I always know that God is with you wherever you are because my hope is in Jesus. See, if my hope was in Jesus, then I would fall on the wayside. But because my hope is in Jesus, I know he stands with me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God do not want anyone to get the credit, get his credit. Hallelujah. So when things go on in your life, make sure you give God the credit because God is the one that brought you through. He don't want you giving credit to your money. He don't want you giving credit to your family. He don't want you giving credit to all your friends that might. It might not help you. He don't want you to give credit to your automobile that brought you down the road. He don't want you to give credit even to your house, to your job. Y'all understand what I'm saying. He want, he want the glory. He want the, he want the glory out your life. Whatever happens in your life, give God the glory. Give him the thanks for what he's doing in our lives. Thank you, Lord God. God, when God brings you through, he wants you to say it was God. Family, friends, and or wealth must never be viewed as our ultimate source of help in this life. That, brings, that belongs to God. See, everything belongs to God. When I'm able to help my family and when I'm able to help my friends, all that glory still belongs to God. Give God the glory that you was able to help them, whether it was financial or whether it was just to sit there and listen to them. Whatever they're telling you, give it to God. Hallelujah. The only source for meeting our, our needs, physical and spiritual, we must trust in him with all our hearts and seek him for grace to help in time of need. What y'all say? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Hebrews 4, 16 says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of trouble or in the time of need. That's Hebrews 4 and 16. It doesn't mean you have to wait till you get to the house of worship to come down to the front and be bold in your prayer. Do that at home. Just be bold in your prayers when you're praying to God. Have assurance, knowing that God hears your prayer. Whatever you need, he's there for you. For my hope is in Jesus. My faith is in Jesus. My confidence is in Jesus. So when, some, when you say hope in, in Jesus and somebody tell you, what you hoping for? My hope is in Jesus because Jesus is the way out for me. You know, you may stand with me for a little while, but after a while, you're going to leave me. But Jesus, he's going to be there forever and ever. So my hope is in Jesus. Hallelujah. I may have money today, but tomorrow it could be gone because of all these bills, all these families that you try to help when you try to do what you can do for them. But when my funds run out, that's okay. God still got me. God going to give you what you need when you need it. So just trust him, y'all. 
Keep your hope in God. I can't say that enough because the devil comes upon you and, and afflict our bodies, hallelujah. He try to afflict our mind. He try to afflict our finances, even the surroundings around us. When you're at home, things start falling. And you be wondering what that is falling. You know you're there by yourself. You know, he tried to take your mind, trying to distract you. But don't let him distract you. Know that your hope is in Jesus, and Jesus got you, no matter what season you are going through. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Because <laughs> my faith is in who? Jesus. My faith is in who? Jesus. My faith is in who? Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if my faith is in Jesus, I'm going to walk through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm going to walk through knowing that he got me, that my faith is in him. Don't look at your natural eyes. Look through the spiritual eyes of God. God ask God to give you those spiritual eyes so you can see him in the spirit, so he can show you where to go, which way to go. Even when you're driving, sometimes you have to go a different way. Let him direct you so you can turn that different way before you go into a midst of trouble because the devil is always out to get us. Whether we're walking, whether we're riding, whether we're sitting at home, he's always trying to afflict us. For Hebrews 3 and 14 says, for we are made partakers of Christ. We're part of Jesus, you know. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast until the end, what's it said today? If you will hear my voice, hear the voice of Jesus. He don't always talk loud, y'all. He talks soft sometimes. But when you hear the voice of Jesus, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. That provocation means being angry or lashing out. He wants to stay calm. But when you hear that voice, remember, he, hallelujah, is there for you. Remembering your hope, your faith, and your confidence is in God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My hope, again, is in Jesus. 1 John 5, 14 and 15 says, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Hallelujah. And that encourages me. What about you all? Does it encourage you? If I ask anything according to his will, he heareth me. So when I pray silently, hallelujah, hallelujah. When I pray silently, when I pray aloud, hallelujah, hallelujah, he hears me. And he reads my heart even before I pray. He see my heart. He see how sorrowful I am in my heart. He see what I need in my heart. And he answers my prayer. And if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. That's 1 John 5, 14 and 15. So let, us, so let your hope be in God. Don't put your hope in me. Because I might be up today and me and I'll be sitting down tomorrow. You know, you're looking for me and I'm not here. But when you're looking for God, he's always there for you. He will never leave you nor will he forsake you. Ephesians 2, 18 says, For by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is a gift. Can y'all say the gift? Yeah. Hallelujah. It's the gift of God. God gave us a gift, not of works, lest any man should boast. God don't want us because I'm standing up here that I assume I'm going to heaven. Nope, that's not it. But it's the gift of God. Hallelujah. And because of the gift of God is because of Jesus. He gave his best gift, which was Jesus. And when Jesus died on the cross for our sins and he shed his blood, he covered us. Our healing, hallelujah, our finances, our depression, whatever it is we go through, Jesus took it on the cross with him. So while he was on the cross, we were on the cross. So it's nothing I can work to do. I can't work to do anything. I can't work to get into heaven. It's not going to work that way. You have to have a heart of God, pure, uh, humble. We have to be humble before God. We can't come in boasting who's thinking who we are. We ain't nobody in God, hallelujah. God can use brother Chick. He don't have to use me. Hallelujah. He can use Sister Vaughn. He don't have to use me. So I can't boast in myself. I have to boast in God. He says, not our works lest any man shall boast. So we can't boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God have before ordained that we should walk in them. So God had already ordained what we were going to be before we got here. So it was up to us to receive the gift, to accept God's gift, which is Jesus Christ, his son, to be able to manifest and to work in his anointing because that's what keeps us going is his anointing. If it wasn't for his anointing, we wouldn't be able to stand and say anything in the name of Jesus because I'm not a person that likes to talk in front of people. I'm really not a person that likes to talk at all. But because of God and what he's done in my life and how he's transformed my life, I'm able to stand and tell you who Jesus is. Jesus is Lord of Lords. He's King of Kings. He's everything that he needs to do in our lives for us to be who he wants us to be. 
So we just have to trust in him and know that he is our hope. Now I want you to turn with me to Mark 5, uh, Mark 5, 1 through 8. Hallelujah, Lord God. This may be a strange verse, but I want you to, to use your spiritual imagination with this verse. 5, 1 through 8. Because, see, Jesus has a way of doing things. Again, he knows our heart. He knows everything about us before we even ask him anything. Are we there yet? Okay, thank you. Okay, and this is about devils being cast out. First verse says, and they came over unto the other side of the sea, unto the country of the Gardenians. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. And this is Jesus that's coming, y'all, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with feathers and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the feathers broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, this is the one I want to get to, and always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar so off, he ran and he worshipped him. Now, when even when we in our mess, Jesus know who we are. We cannot escape him. This man was possessed with demons, but even by him being possessed with demons, Jesus still knew who he was. Jesus still knew he needed deliverance. So I want to encourage you not to be discouraged when you're going through things. Even when we fall, Jesus still see our heart. We can fall and we can get back up, repent, and God put us right back in place. But this man had those demons on him. You know, I don't know, have you ever seen anyone that mm, we, we say, you know, that, you know, uh, don't think so well, that talk out of a term, that act crazy. And this man was even worse because he was cutting himself, he was crying, and I believe because he was cutting himself and he was crying, he was crying for help. He was asking for help. But he only knew when Jesus was coming through, his spirit, hallelujah, hallelujah, his spirit could tell that Jesus' spirit was coming. And the reason he could tell that was because, hallelujah, in Genesis 2, 7, it tells us that God breathed the breath of life inside of us, right? So you, when we were born, we still have the breath of God inside of us, right? Because he breathed inside of us. So that's why he can read us so well, because he's already breathed himself inside of us. So even though we haven't accepted Jesus yet, we, he still know who we are. So when we turn to accept him, when we come to run to him, he still know who we are. So God, or Jesus, is able to forgive us of our sins and to bring us into himself. Now it tells us that when he arranged for Jesus, the devil was talking, but guess what? God still knew the man was in there. He still knew the man needed deliverance. Hallelujah. And God, delivered, Jesus delivered him. I say God, I say Jesus, because they all won. God sent Jesus down across for our sins because that was his son. He came down in the, in the form of Jesus. So we would have a, have a right to the tree of life. So we would be able to repent and get back to him. Now, we learned this morning that the Jews didn't want us to have God. So we need to be thankful that even though the Jews did not want us to have God, that God made it possible for the Gentiles, which we are. We're the Gentiles. So the Gentiles have a right to God just like the Jews. So we need to make sure, hallelujah, we give him praise for who he is because he made it possible for us to receive him. Let's give him a hand clap for praise. Okay, he said, I believe this man, even though possessed with evil, knew that Jesus was approaching. Hallelujah. How did he know? And I just said that Genesis 2, 7 tells me that, that the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils and breath of life, and man became a living soul. That's how Jesus knew. Because inside of us, we have Jesus inside of us. When we go to take a drink, uh, alcohol, we had a cup. But the man of God is still inside of us. So he, he's telling us, don't do it. Don't do it. But guess what? He gave us choices. So when he gives us choices, it's going to be up to you to do or not to do. So he gives us choices. But that anointing is always there. 
And it becomes strong when we start studying God's word, when we start praying to God, when we start believing in what he says, it becomes strong inside of us. And guess what? That where you used to have a cup of alcohol, you don't have it no more. When you used to smoke them cigarettes, you don't do that no more. When we used to be adulterous or fornicators, we don't do that anymore because the word of God is inside of us, pushing out, hallelujah, his anointing on our life. And what we want in our lives, we want God to be seen of our life. We don't want to be seen. We want God to we want people, when they see us, to see God. I want to be able to love on you and know it's not sharing that's loving on you. It's just God. You know, God know you need a hug. Let me give you a hug. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. You're so awesome. Ooh, Mark 5, 17 and 20. And it says, And they began to pray him to depart out of, their, out of their coast. And when he was coming to the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. So once this man was delivered, he wanted to stay with Jesus. So see, when God delivered us, he expected us to stay with him. <laughs> how be it Jesus suffered him not but said unto him go home to your friends and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and have had compassion on thee so Jesus told him no you know he was in the tomb right which is what we call the graveyard he was in the tomb so he wanted to go with Jesus and follow Jesus but he told him no don't do that go home to your family let them know how God has delivered you let him know what things that you have that you have received let them know now that look, I'm in my right mind now. I can talk to you. You know, so, you know, go home to him and give God the glory. Tell him that God delivered me. Jesus delivered me. Hallelujah. So that's why I have hope have to be in Jesus. Because when God delivers us, we need to tell somebody the things that God has done. You don't ever know what somebody else is going through. But when you share your testimony, God will come up on you to share your testimony with them. So when you share your testimony upon them, then they will get released and they can know, okay, God did that for them, God would do it for me too. Hallelujah. So we thank God for that. So since we're all our descendants of Adam and the second Adam, God's anointing is inside all of us. No one is exempt. That anointing is there. Because Jesus sees the heart of man and he knew his man wanted to be delivered. Hallelujah. That God may be, get the glory. This just encourages me to encourage, to continue to put my hope in Jesus, my faith in God, my confidence in the almighty, all-knowing God, because he knows everything. It makes me excited. There is nothing here from our God. So when somebody's messing with me, I don't have the word, hallelujah. God see him. You messing with me, you messing with God. Hallelujah. So remember what 2 Corinthians 4, 17a says, For our light afflictions, which is for a moment. And then verse 18 says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. Because sometimes when people are acting ugly, you can look at them and don't see them. You just see God. They don't see it yet. But you be praying for them. You don't have to pray out loud. You know, you can say a prayer inside your mind. Jesus, help them. Or Jesus, thank you for them. Jesus, deliver them. Because we all need to be delivered in some area. But hallelujah. But I'm so glad that our hope is in Jesus. Therefore, we won't be able to let nobody turn us around. Because the devil is definitely trying to turn us around. So look through the eyes of God as you put your hope in God. Ask God to let you, let you see things as he does. That will make our life a little bit easier, y'all. For we have a future hope. 1 Peter 1, 3 says, Blessed be the God and fathers of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy, hallelujah, have begotten us unto, again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Put your hope in Jesus for today. My hope is in Jesus. And my hope can be in Jesus because I know what God gave up. He came down off of his throne in glory. Hallelujah. Came down for you and he came down for me. Hallelujah. That we may have a right to the tree of life. He came down in the son and the person of his son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And Jesus endured some hardness. Hallelujah. For us. He went to the cross. You know, that wasn't a pleasant thing. But he went to the cross. He shed that blood on the cross. He gave up the ghost. Hallelujah. Went back to heaven. But then he sent back the Holy Ghost. There's right now a rest and rule in the body inside of all of us that our hope can stay in Jesus. So let your hope stay in Jesus as you continue to love on him. We love on each other. We witness the people when we go out. Therefore, our hope is in Jesus that we can bring them on into the house of God. I pray that you receive something today for our hope is in Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.